Hello everyone, welcome to the CDV News on Calabash TV and on the Wave Radio 94.5. I am Lisa Joseph. The Ministry of Health has provided details on its response plan for a new public health threat to the Caribbean. It is a mosquito-borne Zika virus. The Pan-American Health Organization and the World Health Organization have called on nations to be on the alert following an outbreak in Brazil earlier this month. Dr. Sharon Belmar george of the Ministry of Health. Um, global travel and trade within the region, um, it represents a risk for the spread of the Zika virus. It's presently in Brazil, so the Pan American Health Organization, they are recommending that member states establish and maintain the capacity for the Zika virus infection for detection, clinical management, and also an effective public communication strategy to reduce its presence of the, within the region. Um, the Zika virus is spread by the Aedes aegypti family. The Aedes family, which include Aedes aegypti, Aedes albopictus, and Aedes polynesiensis. And as you're aware, we have the Aedes aegypti mosquito in St. Lucia. So for that reason, um, we are increasing our surveillance and ensuring that we have the capacity, if need be, to detect. But I want to make it very clear that we do not, at this point, we do not know of any cases within St. Lucia or the region. It is an alert which was sent down, which was recommended due to its presence in countries such as Brazil, such as Chile, such as other countries where persons travel. So it is an alert for us to ensure that we are prepared to be able to detect and manage the cases, but we do not have cases here. The Zika virus is from the same family as and is similar to dengue with symptoms that include fever, joint and muscle pain, conjunctivitis, headache, weakness, weakness rash and swelling of the lower limbs. After the bite of an infected mosquito, symptoms usually appear following the incubation period of 3 to 12 days. The symptoms last for 4 to 7 days. The Zika virus is transmitted by the bite of an infected Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same mosquito that transmits chikungunya and dengue. Um, the disease may be asymptomatic or it may produce a moderate clinical picture, which includes fever, body pains, joint pains, it gives a macular papular rash, it also presents with conjunctivitis as well. Um, and less frequent, you would get the, the pain behind the, the eyes as is more typical of the dengue fever. You may also get um, gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Um, the Zika virus infection in very rare cases would complicate to give you autoimmune diseases such as leukopenia or thrombocytopenia or it may also give um, neurological symptoms such as meningoencephalitis. Those, sim those um, complications as I indicated are very rare. The Zika virus tends to be a milder infection as compared to both chikungunya and in terms of the dengue. The Zika virus was first isolated in 1947 in a rhesus monkey in the Zika forest of Uganda. It was first isolated in humans in 1952 in Uganda and Tanzania. No deaths due to the Zika virus have been recorded worldwide to date. There is no vaccine and no specific treatment. Paracetamol is used for fever control and antihistamines for the rash. So officials are preaching the same prevention message shared for dengue and chikungunya when Gabriel is the chief environmental officer. We have an ongoing program all year round and usually around this time with the expectation of the rainy season sometime in June and July, we start to uh, ramp up our, our response on the ground. Our, our response is essentially a four-prong uh, response. One, we conduct what is called entomological surveillance, that is we do field um, surveys and so on to gather information on the vector and to determine the areas that are high risk. Uh, by that I mean we, we visit premises and so on and we are able to determine the risk index. For example, the Bretto index, the household index, which would give us an indication of the communities that are most at risk. The Zika threat comes as the Ministry of Health launches its vector awareness campaign under the theme, Beat the Bite, companies and communities collaborating for change. 
um, vector bond diseases such as dengue fever and chikungunya, the impact it has on, on our country is quite tremendous. When you look at it from a health care point of view, in terms of persons being ill, persons getting sick, the out-of-pocket cost for medical care. Also, we have persons living with the chronic illness of chikungunya, as in the chronic joint pain that we, we, we noted after having the disease um, last year. The economic cost of the disease where it came to a lot of our private sector companies in terms of the number of sick leave, the number of sick days that it, it costs in terms of productivity in the workplace. There's also the tourism aspect of it where when countries have chikungunya, sometimes persons don't feel safe to travel. So this had an impact on all of us and on our health care system. We had to deal with an increased number of clients at our health care facilities, both in the community services and also in the hospital. The Ministry of Health says it has compiled a list of communities where cases of vector-borne diseases are high and companies will be asked to adopt those communities and assist in remedying the situation. Meantime, the Ministry is reporting a stabilization on the outbreak of gastroenteritis. It, in the first quarter, there was a spike, especially in children. Dr. Michelle Fosson is the medical surveillance officer. Um, through raising awareness in the schools, the workplaces, hygienic practices, etc., we have managed to get the situation under control, and so the numbers have decreased. Um, what we had seen was that the children under five years old were the main drivers. We had a lot of children under five years old reporting with diarrhea and, and or vomiting. Um, the cases currently are not localized to a particular health region. As you know, we have eight health regions. The cases are not localized to a particular health region, but we continue our work in the community trying to raise awareness of hygienic practices. In terms of fevers, we have had a very low profile for the year. Normally around this time, about May, the numbers, May, June, with the, the rains, the numbers tend to increase. We have not noted an increase, but we are on the alert because we do know that this is the time when we see a rise in vector-borne diseases in dengue, as we had last year, chikungunya. Um, we are preparing for this as well. As Dr. Belmar pointed out, we do have our campaign, our vector awareness campaign in place, ready to go. Um, we have not seen any increases in that. We have only had one case of confirmed chikungunya, confirmed meaning that it has been, a sample had been taken from that patient and sent to be tested. So we only have one case. We do have suspect cases. We have under five cases of dengue. Dengue, as you know, is endemic to St. Lucia. So we do expect to see cases year round. 